This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're doing the review and overview of the Oklahoma Joe's Tahoma 900 smoker. Now, this is an auto feed charcoal smoker, or also considered a gravity smoker, whatever you want to call it, but basically it's self feeding. So you put the charcoal in and it just feeds itself. There's no mechanism behind it. Now, first thing I want to mention is, is I paid for this with my own money. There is no sponsorship here or provided products. So whatever I say is just based off of what I feel and my experience. I have done 20 cooks on this smoker and I feel pretty confident that I have a pretty good opinion of it. The only thing that I would note at the beginning is that it's extremely cold here for doing average smokes. You're not talking about summer temperatures, you're talking about 40 degrees throughout all my experience. Let's go ahead and cover the basic features of the smoker. First off, the list price at the time of filming is $699.99. Next thing is that I'd like to cover the cooking area. Now we have four cast iron grates down here and they are very heavy duty and very nice. The total square area of those grates is 557 square inches. On the upper grate is 318 square inches. Now for the lid, we have this easy to use handle that spins a little bit here. So as you lift it and close it, the handle will swivel in your hand. The lid is kind of heavy, so it will easily stay closed, but it's not too heavy that it'll be cumbersome or difficult to use. Next, let's go ahead and cover the charcoal bin. Now this charcoal bin has two latches right here and then an easy to use handle right here. This handle is coated with a rubber type material. I'm assuming that that is supposed to be heat resistant. I've never had any problem grabbing it. It has not been hot or anything. Over here we have a safety switch that will turn off when the door is open so that way you don't get blowback. And then you have a nice sloped chute here that runs the charcoal right into the burning area. When this is full, it will hold 16 pounds of charcoal. Next, let's cover the ash pan. Now this ash pan or ash tray is basically a drawer on steroids. What we have here is a drawer that can pull completely out. It does have a gasket seal and the two latches. Also, it has a built-in little tray holder here that is for the tumbleweeds to sit on. Above that is where the charcoal actually burns, and then there's a grate right here that the charcoal will sit on. I believe this is cast iron. When you use this, make sure that you pull that grate out and get it out completely and get it completely clean. Once you put your tumbleweeds in here, you'll just close this and latch it back down. Next, I want to cover the wheels since we're down here. We have two rubber wheels front and back, and then we have two swivel casters with side locks. These things will go in any direction, so if you pull the smoker around on a flat level surface, it'll easily move. Up here, we have a damper. Now, I usually just keep this in the open position, but you can just easily move it just like this. This right here, is where the input fan is that blows on the charcoal to control the temperature. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about the control panel over here. Basically, the control panel is mounted to the side of the shelf here, and it turns on with this button right here, and then to adjust it, you just spin the knob, and once you get the setting you want, you give it a little press. If you wanna set the timer, you can do that here by pressing the button and the same as the other one, spinning it and then giving it a press when you have it set. If you want to set a thermometer alarm, you do the same as you press that, turn it and set it to whatever temperature you want and then give it a press and that'll work that. As far as the thermometers go, the smoker includes two of these stainless steel probes and I have one attached and the other one is just taped to the side there because I don't plan on using it for now. I think that two is plenty, but if you want to, you can connect up to four. Now, for me, 
I usually only use one of these and then I use an external thermometer. Here we have the front grate and then here we have the side grate. On the front grate, we have these three included hangers for your tools. Right now, all I have is the grill grate remover tool hung here, but usually I'll hang a brush here and a pair of tongs here. I don't usually do that during the video because they kind of are big and distracting. From the side grate here, underneath it, we have a oil drip pan. And I'll hold that out for you so you can see it. It's nice little rectangle, not very big at all, but works very well. And when I go to put that in, I kind of tilt it to the side a little bit, put one side in, and then it just slides in very conveniently. So that was a complete summary of all the basic features of this smoker. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the smoker and the pros and cons. I'm going to run through this list kind of quick, and then we'll come back and address each issue. As for pros, this smoker has great taste. The next pro, solid construction. This thing is built like a tank. The next pro is the controls are very easy to use, simple to read, nice big output. And the cast iron grates are just great. They're really solid, easy to clean, easy to use. Just what I would expect from a nice cast iron grate. No issues at all. Now, as far as cons go, uh, my first main con is fuel consumption. I want to preface this by saying that it's been 40 degrees here during most of my 20 cooks. And so that might have a lot to do with how much fuel I've consumed. The next is that there's no lift handles anywhere on the smoker. So when I want to move it around, I pretty much have to give it a little bit of a bear hug and put my body into it a little bit to get it to move where I want it. Now I'm also on gravel, so that does make it a little bit more challenging to move the smoker around than a regular surface that you might be on. I think it would be fine on a concrete patio. My next con is thermal runaway. Every time I've used this smoker above 300 degrees, I've had a serious issue with thermal runaway. It always gets much higher than whatever the set temperature is. The next con is the upper shelf. I feel like this upper shelf is kind of awkward in size. It could be a little bit bigger or it could be a little bit smaller. If it was a little bit smaller, it would be completely out of the way and would make a nice warming rack. If it was a little bit bigger, it would be a excellent primary cooking rack, which I primarily use the upper shelf anyway. Finally, I want to mention one more con, which wasn't the biggest issue in the world, but it does seem to leak a lot of smoke around the edges over here that make me think that it's leaking air and it's not funneling everything the, through it the way it should be. So that could be affecting airflow and the temperature control. As you use the smoker more, the smoke will create buildup in any of the cracks and gaps and end up sealing those over time. So I don't know if that'll end up being an issue in another 10 or 20 cooks, but right now I noticed that it was kind of an issue. Now we're gonna go back through all the features. First off, let's start by saying that when I cooked on this smoker at 225, it worked great. Low and slow, excellent. My only concern was the charcoal consumption and the flavor was amazing. The one thing that I did try to do is I tried to cook on the top shelf all the time and that way I could put in a cookie sheet to keep from getting the grease all over the place. When I did cook on the lower area or have grease that didn't go into the cookie sheet, it easily flowed down into that grease pan and had no problem with it flowing at all. As far as the temperature and how even it was, it was amazing. The only spots that I would avoid would be right here. And if you want to refer to my biscuit test, you can check that out. But everything in the middle and especially on the top was extremely even. So I'm assuming that that just means that we had good airflow through the cooking chamber and out the chimney. As far as 
front, great shelf. This shelf was just a touch small for my liking. I think it could come out another two or three inches to fit a platter that's more appropriately matched to the size of the grill grates. Because if you're using a grill grate that big, you're probably using food that's a little bit larger too. And this won't hold a very large piece of food. Now here is the next problem is that this handle is just a little too close. In one of my modifications, I'm gonna actually raise this handle up and that way it'll allow a little bit more room in between the shelf and the handle so I'll be able to get steak or chicken or whatever I want underneath that. Now, of course, a brisket still won't fit there, but we don't wanna take a chance of putting a brisket right on the edge of here anyway. Next, let's talk a little bit about the bin here. The bin, um, it doesn't feed well. When I say that, what I mean is I keep getting charcoal stuck. And before I leveled the smoker out, I had one time when I had 12 charcoal stuck in here. I opened it up, I looked in there, I'm like, what's going on here? All the charcoal was just kind of laying up against the slope rather than falling down into the burning area like it should have. Another thing that I had an issue with was I let it run down just a little too low, I believe. Then when I went to reload it, I poured the charcoal in and I actually put fire out by the charcoal coming in. I believe what happened was it broke up all the charcoals that were lit and most of them fell through and just burned out. So it didn't transfer that into the charcoal. Now, of course, I tossed that video, but the food was just fine because it had been past the halfway point and I was able to just finish it in the electric smoker without issue. The next thing is, is that the bottom grate gets a little dirty and clogged up with ashes. So you have to make sure that you take out the burning grate and clean that area. And I've also gotten in the habit of using a brush to brush the air pass through. There's a side grate, which is where the hot air enters the manifold and moves up into the main smoker body. Now, if that gets clogged up with ashes or briquettes, that'll also reduce your airflow. So you wanna get that completely clear before you load your next load of charcoal and light it. And basically, I just brush that clean before every load and use. The wheels are kind of a big issue for me. I think that because this is the heavy side, somehow they should have engineered it to get bigger wheels on this side. I don't know exactly how you would do that with that drawer there. But my thought is, is that it'd be nice to have some way of accomplishing that. And again, I don't know how. Possibly there should have been like legs that came off and contained the wheels out farther away to balance the weight a little bit more. I think that covers pretty much all of my main concerns. The one thing I forgot to mention is that there is a hanging clip on the back here that I didn't mention in the features and your upper shelf can just sit there and clip in there. As far as the upper shelf goes, if it was a little bit bigger, that would be great. And also if there were two more positions that it could go in, one higher and one lower, I think that would help and it wouldn't really hurt anything inside the existing format of the smoker. I'm gonna look and see if there's a way that I can attach something onto there without making a permanent modification where I might be able to change the level of that and maybe even move it out just a little bit more. As far as the overall opinion of the smoker, on the Oklahoma Joe's website, it said that they had a 4.7 out of five review rating based on 33 reviews. I don't know how that's curated. It could be that they have to have the reviews be approved or not. I have no idea. So I can't have an opinion on whether or not there was other reviews that were omitted or not. My rating for this smoker is a seven out of 10. Now, I feel like that if it had a little bit more stable higher end temperatures and the charcoal feed was better, that that would pretty much make it a lot better smoker to me. Now, I plan on modifying the chute in the future by putting in a curved piece of stainless steel and see if that helps. That will, of course, reduce the amount of charcoal that I can put in there. So we will have to load in the middle and that'll go from 
probably 16 pounds down to a 12 pound capacity. But remember, still, I'm not planning on filling it above that maximum fill line, no matter what. Would I buy it again? Definitely. I don't think that it was unreasonable for the price and the performance. Again, at the low and slow cook temperature, the taste was amazing. One thing I wanna point out is that I did not hook up the Wi-Fi. I have a personal thing against Wi-Fi smokers. The only ones that I've really had good luck with Wi-Fi and a smoker have been pellet grills. The master built ones, I really didn't like how they performed with the Wi-Fi, but that's maybe a, just a personal thing. I like to be able to just set it, run it from here, and then go. I do have a Thermo Pro wireless probe so I can monitor the temperatures inside the smoker and inside the food without having any connection to the smoker itself. That might make a difference. If you don't own one of those, then that might actually be a real advantage for you. I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to say about the Oklahoma Joe's Tahoma. And I gotta say, I really do like it. And I'm glad that I purchased it. I think that if I don't find a buyer for the smoker, I will be happy with it. In the future, I do have about six more videos scheduled to come out. If you saw anything you like on the video, the links are below. Currently the link for this one in the video will be to Lowe's, but once Amazon has it, I will update that link. Those links are Amazon affiliate links. If you use those, I will get compensated. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.